Hi, Nicole here and welcome to another video. In today's video, I am going to transform these 24 by 36 corrugated boards into backdrops for some upcoming food and product photography assignments that I have. Let me show you what I will do to transform these boards. Here we go. So if you've seen my past video on making your own backdrops at home, I created this piece of foam board into this piece of wood backdrop. This is great, it's worked wonders, and it's a great size for the project that I needed it for. But for some upcoming projects, I need a much bigger size. So this is kind of your standard foam board that you could get at a craft store. And just for comparison, you can see how much bigger this 24 by 36 board will be. Now I've made a change in the material. I went from foam board to this corrugated board and we're gonna test it out and see how it works. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna talk about are the materials for this project. And I had mentioned that I'm using corrugated boards um, I've been told that they're going to stand up a little bit more than foam board. So I'm testing it out for this project and I'm excited about getting this size 24 by 36 corrugated board. Now this board, I have it in black. I have seen it in white. So depending on your project, it might vary on what type of backdrop that you would want. But I think since I'm covering all four sides of these two boards, black is fine. Okay. so. I purchased three different styles of peel and stick wallpaper. I have a light gray, so this will be like a light concrete. I wanted something soft and neutral, so I'm excited to cover two of the surfaces with this, and this is 16 inches by 118 inches. Then, just for contrast, I wanted one of the sides to be a darker gray, and this came in 15.8 but 160 inches, so obviously I'm gonna have some leftover of this. And then I wanted another surface to be this white marble. Now, I've used this in the past for food photography and has worked out really well, so I wanted to do one side with this white marble. Other materials to consider when you're doing this project is how you're going to cut the paper, mark the paper, and then when you're applying the paper, how to take those air pockets out. So I have a green healing mat here. So once I roll the paper out and mark it with my pencil, I'll be able to get a nice clean cut and not worry about the table below. And I could use some sharp scissors a rotary cutter, or even I have a straight edge. So depending on what you have, there's a lot of different options. To roll out the air pockets when I'm moving the paper across, this is just simply a plastic bench knife, and I will outline everything down below if you're interested in what I am using so you can start your research. Okay, we have all the materials. Let's make some backdrops. All right, so I've unpacked the gray. This is gonna be like a nice soft gray concrete type of background, I'm excited about this one. And what's great about this peel and stick wallpaper is that on the back there's a grid, which really helps when you're cutting um, and to guide a straight line. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to bring this up to the corner of the corrugated board and I'm gonna smooth it out because all those bumps kind of add to the material. I'm gonna roll it all the way to the end of the cor corrugated board and then I'm gonna mark a line. So I've marked a line along the, along the paper and if I wanted to use my self-healing mat and, and cut it, I could do that. Otherwise, because of these lines, it makes it really easy to just follow. I can use these really sharp scissors. Cut off my first piece. And now I can start applying it to my board. Okay, so I don't just take all the paper off and start sticking it. I will start at a small section and make my way down the board. So first you have to start it 
Here we go. Separate those two. Okay, and I will go kind of across the back here, just maybe a couple inches down. Okay, you don't want any wrinkles. And I will just line this up, nice straight edge. And we'll go across. Okay, and here we have the start to the first piece. I will now grab the bench knife here. I'm gonna move this over, and I'm just going to nicely make my way down the board. And as I go, I'm just gonna pull the paper back. There's that first pocket, air pocket. It's gonna push away. Now, if there's you get into a little trouble, you can always peel back up and then go back down. It's pretty forgiving. All right, I'm gonna keep going, making sure I get all those air pockets out. And I can actually put my hand underneath here and then make my way down, pulling the paper, and it makes it much faster as well. All right, so for this, now it's a little overhang, which I can go back and kind of cut if I need to. It's always better to have it long, a little longer than shorter. And now I'm going to do the same thing, but now I need to do two cuts. I need to do the length again, but since the actual piece of material, the wallpaper, the peel and stick wallpaper is probably half of the roll, I'm going to roll it out and then also mark the probably halfway point and then make that small strip. Okay, I'm gonna do that now. Okay, so now that we've completed both of the soft gray concrete, I'm really happy um, about this. Can't wait to start using this. I'm going to cover one of the back sides with this kind of marble looking wallpaper, peel and stick wallpaper. It, this one does have a sheen to it. As I go, I'm gonna remove it. There we go. Okay. That looks great. So now, just like we did before, I'm gonna measure out this distance, cut the length, and then apply this short piece. And again, I'm going to look for that manufacturer's straight edge to match here. So it's nice and clean, there's not any big gaps. All right, I'll do that next. Okay, so the final board has been created. This is the dark gray kind of concrete color. And this one actually was probably the easiest one and fastest one to install. And this, of course, is the most expensive roll. This one was $18.99, but really durable. If I needed to peel back a little bit, there was hardly any like air bubbles and it went down pretty smoothly. Um, the marble one, this was on sale for $8 and it's normally um, $18. So I grabbed that on Amazon and this one was fast and pretty durable and great to use as well to install. And then of course on the back two sides, I have the gray. This was $12.99 for the gray and I had a little bit more trouble with air bubbles on this, but overall I'm super happy with the overall outcome. Now, 
From my past videos when I made DIY backdrops, I had some questions on how to kind of fit them together. So if we wanted to do this combination, for example, and if it was just freestanding on a table. Now, you have a couple options. You could have a sandbag behind here. You could have a stack of books. You could be leaning it against the wall. But I wanted to test out this I wanted to test out this product, it's called Snap It Boards. This is their, it's basically a three millimeter and a five millimeter um, sections, channels in here. And I can simply, just going to slide the bottom board there. And then slide this board on this side and now I have the channel on top that I can either slide in my gray on gray or if I want to go dark gray and light gray I can just drop that in to that channel and it fits pretty snug now that I have the materials on there and it looks pretty good. So I'm gonna have a much larger space to do photo shoots. I'm just gonna turn it so you can kind of see that it's pretty sturdy and it can, it doesn't seem like it's gonna fall. It seems pretty good. I'm so excited about this. Okay, so like I mentioned, everything will be outlined down below to let you know what I'm using here. So to start your research for your DIY, um, this is going to be a portable backdrop for me. So when I go out on assignments for food photography, product photography, this is going to be a great addition to my kit in this upcoming shoot. All right, let me know if you have any questions and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.